Midjourney has just released version 5.1. I've been using Midjourney 5.1 for about a day now, and it amazes me how much better the results already are from version 5 to 5.1. I don't want to waste any more time, so I'm going to show you the update notes, and I'm also going to dive in and show you some examples comparing version 5 to version 5.1. Let's get into it. So these are the update notes posted on May 3rd of 2023. And it starts off by saying, number one, we are testing a version 5.1 image system. Version 5.1 is more opinionated and is much easier to use with shorter prompts. What that basically means is that Midjourney is going to do a little bit more what it wants to do, but that's just in version 5.1. There is also an unopinionated mode for version 5.1, and this version is called raw mode. Now this is pretty similar to version 5.0, but check out some of the upgrades that have been added to version 5.1. As you can see, it has higher coherence, more accuracy to text prompts, fewer unwanted borders or text artifacts, and also improved sharpness. And throughout the rest of this, it kind of just describes on how you enable V5.1, but I'm going to show you how to do that now. So in order to enable Midjourney version 5.1, what you need to do first is type in slash settings. And after you type in something like slash set, it should come up right here. You can just tap slash settings and then hit enter in order to send it off. And then it will bring this screen up. When you're at the screen, as you will notice, you can see Midjourney version 5.1 right here, as well as a new raw mode next to that. So if you haven't been using Midjourney the past four or five days, I'm assuming you'll be on Midjourney version five. What you wanna do is select Midjourney version 5.1, and what you'll notice here is it says current suffix, and then there's nothing right there. This has been a slight issue I've seen, and it's no problem. All you have to do is just tap Midjourney version 5.1 again, until you see the suffix. So now I'm on Midjourney version 5.1 compared to Midjourney version 5. You can also select raw mode here, and all that does is add on to version 5.1 this style command, style raw. So this would be the unopinionated version of version 5.1. So you can just shut off raw mode if you don't want it on. You can just select it again and that will turn it off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my AI art hub on Notion and I'm going to use some of those components that I've created from there in order to test out this new version and compare it side by side. You know, what does 5.1 look like compared to 5.1 raw compared to the regular version five that we've all been using for the past couple months now. So this is my AI art hub that I use in Notion. What's included is 500 design components. So when I open up the components database, you can see that I have the 10 most important components and 50 items within each of those components. So this helps me a lot with my Midjourney art. You know, I'm always coming in here searching for items and components that I can use for my prompts. And it just is nice having my own gallery on my homepage that I can come back and take a look at all of this stuff I've created. I made a full video showcasing this. You can watch that in the upper right hand corner. If you'd like to purchase this template, you can do so using the link in the description or the top end comment. But considering the fact that Midjourney 5.1 has just gotten a lot better with some shorter prompts, what I'm going to do is just use some of these components from my database in order to showcase the differences and to showcase the creativity of Midjourney 5.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open up my subjects. These are some of my favorite subjects and I'm also going to open up my style category. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to combine a few of these within Midjourney in order to compare and contrast the versions. So. First, I'm going to take a dragon in the style of, let's just say glitch art. Let's say we want a dragon in the style of glitch art. And now let's paste these in the mid journey and compare our versions. I'm going to go over here, type in slash imagine, paste in a dragon. I'm going to go back over here, paste that in. And now I'm going to add a permutation in order to generate all three of the prompts at once. So at the end of this command, what I can do is I can just paste in my permutation. What this is going to do is this is going to take this prompt and generate an image within version five, generate an image within version 5.1, and also generate an image within version 5.1 raw. So what I'm going to do is send this off, and then it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to imagine three prompts from this template? And if you want to, you can even hit show prompts, and it will show you what prompts you're generating, and then you can just confirm, hit yes. So the results are in, and this is version five. You know, this is the version that we've been using for the past couple months now. And these dragons turned out quite nice, but as you can tell, the background is plain, the dragon doesn't have much contrast, and it's kind of just a boring image. You know, before 5.1, I would have thought this image was great, but when you go over and look at the version 5.1, 
As you can see, it's taken in the style of glitch art, mixed it with this dragon, and even added some of its own elements. It almost looks like it's breathing fire in this bottom left one here. They have a lot more contrast, vibrance, the pictures just look a lot more fun and engaging. And then it's kind of funny going back and looking at version 5 and just seeing the difference in results. Uh, these dragons are definitely very, very cool, just a lot more different and less vibrant than version 5.1. Now this is the raw style of version 5.1. There's not much difference in styling compared to the raw version of 5.1 in the opinionated version of 5.1, but as you can tell the quality increase even when using the unopinionated version, which is the raw style, is just very dramatic. There's a lot more color, it looks a lot more fun. Now this next example that I'm about to show you genuinely shows the best differences between the two models, version 5, and version 5.1. You'll definitely be able to tell what the difference between opinionated and unopinionated is within this next example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my subjects, close my style. I'm just going to open up some of my favorite compositions I like to use, and I'm just not going to combine it with any subjects or anything. I'm just going to copy depth of field here and leave it up for interpretation for mid journey to decide what is it going to generate when I just type in depth of field. So I'm going to copy that, Head over here and now I'm going to type slash imagine and paste in depth of field and grab my permutation once again and paste it to the end of this prompt so we can get all three versions of this image generated and just watch what this does to the picture and you'll definitely be able to tell which model generated what. So this is version 5 for depth of field. As you can see, it took that prompt, depth of field, and it related it to a camera. So this is mid journey version 5. Now if we go over to the raw version of Midjourney 5.1, you'll see that it did something similar, except what it did was it added the entire camera, it added some nice backgrounds, made the images a little bit more clear. And now let's go to Midjourney version 5.1, the regular 5.1, not the raw version. So this is the opinionated version. This is taking my prompt and it's kind of formulating its own opinion on what to generate for the prompt depth of field. So when I click into this, as you can see, this is just where Midjourney 5.1 stands out completely. So in this top left, it has generated a camera, but it's just put it in this beautiful, awesome setting to show a great depth of field. There's also this little water droplet or globe looking item in the bottom left showcasing depth of field very nicely. We can kind of see this little forest in their own little world from an outside view. And this is actually being held in the palm of somebody's fingers, but there are people walking around in their own world right here. A great demonstration of depth of field. There's also this little worker in a field full of pumpkins. And then in the bottom right, we have one similar to the bottom left where there's this globe and there's a lot of depth. So this is actually showcasing depth of field rather than showcasing what item provides depth of field. Now when looking at this new Midjourney 5.1 update, that depth of field prompt provides a perfect visual illustration of the differences between the models. Version 5 generated an image of lens, similar backdrops, very simple, plain out what you ask it to generate. Version 5.1 raw actually adds some different backdrops and makes these images a little bit higher in contrast. It adds a black and white image adds full cameras, different backdrops, and things like that, while version 5.1 actually takes the prompt and generates what does it think of when the prompt depth of field is typed in. It didn't just generate a camera lens or a camera, but what it did instead was generated a scene with a high depth of field. I'm going to open my subjects and my styles back up, and for this next one, I want to do a butterfly in the style of metaphysical art. So I'm going to copy and paste those into my mid-journey now. So I have this prompt in here, a butterfly in the style of metaphysical art with my permutations here at the end. And now what we are going to do is send this off and hit yes. And while those are generating, I do want to show you what metaphysical art actually looks like. So you can kind of know the style that we're going for here. So metaphysical art is this kind of wispy, curly and wavy, dreamy kind of style. So I'm excited to see what does Midjourney version 5 think compared to the raw version of Midjourney 5.1 compared to just the regular 5.1. So this is what Midjourney version 5 generated. Beautiful images. I'm still loving this, even though it's not Midjourney version 5.1. Like Midjourney version 5 is still absolutely mind blowing. Like these images are awesome and it's pretty hard to beat. Now this is Midjourney version 5.1 in the raw version. So the unopinionated version of Midjourney 5.1. As you can see, it definitely changed up the images quite a bit. 
What this has done is it's added a black background, a white background, a gradient colorful abstract background, as well as a golden brown background. So it's definitely changing the background, it's changing the scene. And what this kind of looks like is when you just bump up the stylized parameter within version five. And this is version 5.1. So a very beautiful image. There are a lot more intricate details, intricate lines, but it's actually quite similar to version five. It's just, as you can tell, there is like a little bit more contrast, a little bit more colors going on here and it just looks a little bit more vibrant. That's what I've been noticing is it just seems like Mid Journey version 5.1 is a little bit more vibrant than version five. So here are the eight images of the butterflies if you wanna look at them side by side. This over here on the left is Mid Journey version five and on the right is Mid Journey 5.1. So there definitely is a pretty big difference and the right side in my opinion looks better but it just depends on what you're going for. I'm sure some would disagree and think that the left side is actually a little bit better. My favorite one out of all eight is definitely the one in the bottom left here on the right side. So this has been a showcase of Mid Journey version 5.1. Now I would love to hear your feedback in the comments on what do you think of Mid Journey version 5.1? Are you going to be using it? Do you think it's a step in the right direction for Mid Journey? Please just let me know any of your thoughts. If you did enjoy this video, please drop a like and subscribe. I would highly, highly appreciate it. Now, if you do want to purchase that template that I was using throughout this video, you can do so using the link in the description or the top end comment. On that landing page, there is a demo video showcasing the template a little bit more in depth. That is all I have for today, and I will see you in the next video.